Folks, I want to share with you guys 10 of the most sacred items in prison. 10 of the most sacred things in prison. I'm going to try to run through this video real quick. I don't want to make this super long. But when you think about being locked up in prison and, and things that prisoners would hold dear to their heart, we're not just talking about commissary items, though they will be on this video. We're talking about everything as a whole, an entirety. In prison, what do prisoners value most? Well, without further ado, folks, we're going to go ahead and dive head first up into this video. Stellar dive scene, if I do say so myself. The first item making this list has to be toilet paper. I uh, don't mind this roll right here. My dogs, they chew up everything. And I'm going to have to wipe my ass with this at some point. We're running low on provisions in the house. And this ain't getting thrown away. But toilet paper while locked up, folks, is definitely going to be a very sacred item. We've addressed toilet paper in the past here on After Prison Show. The many different uses of it. Ten things that you can do with toilet paper. But this is an absolute, not only necessity, but it's, it's a really important item to have. Prison, just like anywhere else, you're going to have to wipe your ass. And when you don't got toilet paper and you got to use your sock, you know how many guys I saw coming out of the prison restroom with one sock on after taking a doo-doo? Ain't no shame in the game. If you run out of this, you're going to have to make do one way or another. Prisoners will hoard this. They will consider this like gold while locked up. And I don't say that to try to make fun or anything like that. But there can certainly be some times while locked up that you don't know when and where your next roll of TP is coming from. Go ahead and try to salvage that one little square right there. Next up on this list of sacred items definitely has to be your phone. Not your phone, because you're not allowed or supposed to have your phone while locked up, but the phone while locked up. The phone in prison or jail is definitely going to be a very sacred item. It's going to be one of your few ways to be able to, it's going to be their most important way to be able to contact your loved ones, the outside world, keep up with what's going on with the Kardashians. Like the phone is so important while locked up to most prisoners. To prisoners who say that they don't bid off of the phone, there most certainly are prisoners who don't. For four years of the seven years that I served, I did not worry about the phone. I laughed at guys who were worrying about the phone. <laughs> Look at you, stressing over the phone. But at least he's got somebody he can call. I don't got nobody. Nobody wants to talk to me. Hey, anybody trying to sell a three-way? The phone. Dudes will fight behind it. They'll fight behind the toilet paper, too. Pretty much every item listed in this video, everything listed in this video, dudes will fight for and behind while serving time. That rhyme. Bars. The phone can also lead to many problems. Yo, I said I had next on the phone. Yeah, yeah, I got you, I got you. But this girl, though, this girl, she, ta she told me she's taking the girdle off right now. Oh, girl, I could hear them fat rolls flopping. Did you just get in the pool? Why does it sound like so much water? I don't know where I was going with that skit. Something about wet? Ugh. The phone is super important. Not only can you use it to contact your loved ones and keep up with what's going on out there, try to do some fishing if you're at a facility where that's a thing that can happen. Back during my earlier days of getting in trouble, younger Joe, little pistol starters, what they used to call me, or Jay Smooth, you could actually just dial in random numbers and even leave like a little recorded message. You can't do that no more, but dudes would strike off of the fishing. You have a collect call from... Hey, baby, I, 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 I might have dialed the wrong number, but listen, I, hey, if you could just hit one and accept this call, I've got some very vital information about your car's extended warranty. Hello? I'm definitely feeling the skits today. Third sacred item in prison, something that guys are going to hug. They're going to hold it tight to their chest. I mean, they, they love all of these things as well. Not only will they fight behind all of these things, they love all of these things as well. I loved all of these things except for the phone during those four years when nobody wanted to talk to me. <laughs> Why? Zoom Zooms and Wham Whams, your commissary. We just did a video featuring old Bob 
and saw how full up he was on commissary, folks. That commissary is sacred. I ain't got to tell you guys because I've already told you 40 times throughout the course of the five plus years we've been doing videos here, but you guys know. They feed you like Padukey while locked up no matter where you are. I know, I've heard some places the feds got a salad bar like Ruby Tuesdays. I don't know that to be true or not, but I've heard that. So because of the fact that the food that they serve you there is like dookie everywhere, all over the tray at least, I've seen guys actually dookie on the tray when I was working in the dish room. Hmm. Most horrendous smell I ever smelled in my life when I popped the top to that tray. Could actually see like little corn kernels in there. <laughs> Commissary is super important. Not everybody in prison is making commissary. Not every prison that you're going to be at, even if you've got money, should you be making commissary? I can remember a time back when I was in the receiving unit. Dudes tried to come up and extort me and I said, hey, look, I ain't got no money. I am broke. I tattoo though. And that kind of spared me in there. I didn't have to get all full-blown Spartan on their ass and wear that hellacious ass whooping that I probably would have. I lived quite comfortably as a white guy in this gangland of a receiving prison, Mecklenburg, and I tried to warn other white dudes coming up in there, look man, I know you wanna go to commissary and bring back that Christmas sack like you Santa, but you ain't safe to do so here. Man, I'm not worried about these dudes. I'm not worried about these dudes. Next thing you know, I see everybody coming out of his cell with not only all of his commissary, but also his shoes. I bet these Air Maxes look absolutely crisp with this ring light, but I can assure you guys, uh, there's actually a big old dirt stain right here. I went and met a contractor over at the flip house yesterday. He said, hey, is it cool if I bring my dog? I said, yeah, sure. What harm could it do? The damn pit bull stepped on my shoes. Commissary is super sacred in prison. There's going to be times when... You can't get commissary because of lockdowns. Commissary is gonna make your time easier. There's nothing like going to sleep while you locked up laying comfortably on that little thin foam mat, like an inch of foam separating you from steel or concrete. And knowing that your belly's full because you just ate you a nice little swole, watching a Monday night football game, watching that guy that you hate team lose. Oh, the hate in prison? Dudes will hate so much on each other, they will despise their football teams. I should know because I was a hater at one point too. But just like everything else, commissary can most certainly lead to some problems. And that's probably because of the fact that it is such a sacred item. I'm doing better with this. I feel like we're rolling through this. We're incorporating some prison stories. Like, I, go ahead and smash that like button for me because we're not gonna make this super long. I'm gonna try not to. If it ends up being 25 minutes, that's still relatively short. It's not an hour. I realize my lot in life. We are not an hour-long TV program. Fourth thing to make this list super sacred, any kind of letters and photos that you have from your girl. Your girl who's no longer your girl because she done found Jody number 10. Yo, that was such an awesome thing. I think it was from a Valentine's Day video that we did. I said something along the lines of talking about guys getting on the phone trying to call home, saying that dudes are going to let the haymakers... How did I say it? You're probably going to see a lot more fights on Valentine's Day just as you would any other holiday that you're locked up for because dudes is going to let the feelings fly just like them haymakers. Bung, bung, bung. Say something again because I can't stop thinking about my girl and what she's out there doing with. Bung, bung, bung. Jody number 10. Say something again. Cody! Say something again. Cause I can't stop thinking about my girl she's out there with Jody number 10 Jody number 10 Jody number 10 Jody <laughs> Just had to throw that little clip in there But your letters and photos that you have of your loved ones, your family, your mother, your father, your grandparents, people that you might know who have passed away, your kids, dudes will cherish those items. Like you don't know how important it is for somebody who's serving time to get a letter. Now it's mostly an email. But to be able to hold that letter where she done sprayed all that little cologne all over, cologne's a guy, where she done sprayed all of that cologne all over that, oh my God, is that Armani? Still a guy we're talking about right there. But things are changing in the prison system. Prisons are getting hip to the suboxone strips and now it's emails and video visits. And again, just like everything else, 
your letters and your photos, those super sacred items, those things that you will hold tightly and dearly, hold to for dear life. She wrote me two years ago. She probably just can't afford a stamp right now. We're dealing with a pandemic. I remember this one time I was at uh, Haynesville, not Halifax. I was at Haynesville. There was a creepy old dude who worked in visitation. And his job was to take pictures for prisoners with their loved ones. A lot of action. A lot of, lot of action taking place in the visiting room. I wasn't going over there. This was during the four-year hiatus I took from visits and phone calls. I did that myself. I chose. I did not. I did not choose to be that lonely. But this creepy old dude was working over there and he was taking pictures and I guess he was running some kind of a, like a hustle. I think like, you know, he would get you some extra pictures, something along them lines. And somebody told on him for this hustle that he was doing. And when they came and searched him, yo, they pulled out all of these pictures. And dude was keeping and creeping with your visitation pictures. Taking them joints, laminating them, put a little bit of saran wrap around them money putting them right up on the shower wall, putting the flag pulled down, flag on the plate. Hey, back shower, you good? Nah, I got your whole family back here with me. He ended up having to go to PC after that because everybody in the housing unit wanted to fight him, except for me, because I wasn't getting a visit. <laughs> it's not funny, actually. Speaking of pictures, look at his photograph. Every time I do it, it makes me laugh. <laughs> she forgot about me. But speaking of photos coming in at number five, I believe it's five that we're on right now. Shots. Yo, the shots. The prison porn. One of my, hands down, my biggest hustle. My biggest money maker. Joe was full up because of the shot. And them things sold like hotcakes. I will never forget for the life of me Mail time during this time. We are beyond the four-year hiatus of Joe being Mr. Lonely, Akon song, up in prison. And I got me a prison pen pal. And she is printing these pictures off like counterfeit money. These joints were straight counterfeit. They were coming from the street, not a vendor, not an approved vendor. We were just, yeah, so I don't need to incriminate myself with that. But I'll never forget mail time during that. I mean, I was getting stacks of mail like this. They would come in with stacks of mail like this, and everybody would be jumping off their bunk. Yo, I know she wrote me. And half of that stack or three quarters of that stack went straight to me. And them dudes would be so salty because the only thing that would be left is some, some legal mail and some Bible studies. Yo, the shots are gonna be your girl when you ain't got a girl. When your girl's done moved on out there in the world with whatever number Jody. Them shots are gonna keep you company when you're locked up and you're lonely. Dudes will even make up name for it. Yeah, this is Cinderella right here. And this one right here, this Barbie. Yeah, we got an open relationship. We got a menage a trois. We like an Oreo cookie. We like a, a pyromaniac or a, 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 a polyant. Whatever that thing is called when you got multiple wives. Okay, cut. I gotta go meet this contractor. I'll come back, I'll finish this video. <sighs> Ow, God, the couch ain't as soft as I thought it was. All right, I'm back. I just got done meeting with a contractor. And I think things are getting ready to rock and roll over at the flip house. I hate too that I stopped right in the middle of one of the most important sacred items that I think that there is while serving time in prison. And that is the shots. But hopefully I was able to address that well enough as to why, you know, pictures of naked women, nudes, in case I, I know I didn't mention what shots were. If you guys don't know what shots are here on After Prison Show, you've missed a couple of videos. But yeah, shots are definitely important. They're going to keep you company during your loneliest times while locked up because when you're locked up, you're in there by yourself. And even though you may have loved ones out there and it's going to feel like for them that they're doing the time with you, but yo, you're in there by yourself. And them naked ladies, they certainly keep guys company. They kept me company many a times. Many a times while locked up. So a very super sacred item, the shots are. Let's go ahead and move on to item number six. And this one pertains more to your flex, your floss. Not dental floss, though. Your ability to look cool while locked up. Sacred will certainly be 
your shoes, your watch, your Levi's, your denim jacket, anything that is extra. You know, you're going to see dudes while locked up that look like they've got a lot of money in comparison to other prisoners just by the fact that they've got a certain type of shoes. These icy white Air Maxes right here with that dog dookie footprint all over them. Up inside of the prison, these are going to go for a lot more money than they cost out here in the free world. Out here, they're a buck twenty. In prison, you might pay double that. And I'm not going to say that you would, but I know that some guys will. I'll never forget my pair of Lamborghinis while I was locked up. It took me a long time to get those, too. I was down to like my last year in prison before I ever got me some Lambos up in the garage. A nice pair of shoes in your prison locker. Not your prison suitcase, not to be confused with that. I bought me a busted, busted pair of Air Force Ones. But they had been well kept up, I guess, for the most part. But you could certainly tell that they were every bit of 15 years old. Were Air Force Ones out 15 years ago? I'm pretty sure that they wore. But your shoes, a nice watch, any type of jewelry that you could get, that denim jacket, your Levi's, anything that other prisoners don't really have. It's almost like having a Tesla in prison. Having you a nice pair of shoes or something that's been smuggled in from the visitation room. Your girl wore in a size 12 and told you that she bought those from the store, but they look like they've been worn before. And you don't really want to be thinking that that's Jody's pair of shoes. Jody done kicked to the cause. Jody done gave you his shoes. But yeah, any of the above mentioned items that I just mentioned here, your shoes watch, nice clothing, those are definitely going to be sacred to dudes while locked up. Not every prisoner is going to have them. Some prisoners might try to steal that type of stuff. Certainly sacred. Number seven is going to seem a little preposterous, but trust me when I tell you this ain't nothing but the truth. Floors. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking to yourself, Joe, how could a prisoner own floors? You mean like what you step on? Yes. The floors in a prison. How could a prisoner own that? And you got every right to ask that question. And you are right to think that a prisoner does not own the floors. However, you most certainly will have some prisoners who think that they do. Certain prisoners who are in real tight with the guards or certain staff members, they got cheeseburgers while you're eating a ramen noodle. They're probably telling everything that they know, telling on you for walking on the floors that they just buffed. And that's probably what their prison job is, some sort of a floor maintenance technician. You're a floor buffer. You get paid 35 cents an hour to buff the floors. And buff those floors, they will get mad at you and want to fight you behind the floors? You know, I heard about this one time when a prisoner got caught with a floor buffing machine up inside of their cell. If that does not fully represent state struckedness to the fullest, I don't know what the hell else does. And you know, some prisoners will even go so far as to buff the floors in their own cell, to tell you you got to take your shoes off before you go in they cell. You should not be going in anybody's cell where you got to take your shoes off prior to walking in there. Probably not going to end very good for you. But prisoners who value the floors and cherish those floors and consider floors sacred territory, sacred to them, they love the floors. Floors so clean that you could eat off of them. Those are some of the worst type of prisoners that you got to deal with. In a place where you don't have much, something like a part of this prison structure and I'm not talking about like any kind of group, stru the, like the building structure could be held near and dear to certain prisoners. And I want to go a little bit further with that. You know, there's other things that prisoners could cherish, like their toilet, their silver bullet, the steel commode. I've seen prisoners polish those things like it's a Harley Davidson. Those type of people have been locked up way too long, way too long. Number eight on this list is a pretty easy one to understand. And what that is, is coffee. A material in, inanimate, inanimate, unanimated object. Keefy coffee, yellow bag, black bag, blue bag, tan bag, brown bag, red bag. There's a lot of different color variations for the bags of coffee in prison. But coffee is an absolute, not only a sacred item, but it's a necessity. I mean, it's something that guys need. It helps them stay awake because everybody wants to be awake in prison. It's like a legal drug in there. You know, there's certain prisons where you can't even have coffee but because they consider caffeine like an addictive substance. Matter of fact, at Indian Creek, the last prison that I was at, 
it was an urban legend and maybe it was true, but I had heard back in the day, years prior to me getting there, that you weren't allowed to buy sodas, candy bars, or even coffee because they considered that caffeine and that sugar an addictive substance. Now, even as bad as all of that sounds, I heard that a lot of like really crazy stuff was going on. I heard that prison was off the chain way back in the day and that some of the COs would do something strange for some change back in the day. So I guess it was a little bit of give or take. But getting back on track, you know, coffee is something that dudes are going to hoard. They are going to, you know, they're going to work hard to get it. Dudes are going to have a prison hustle to make sure that they're able to keep that coffee. It's a sacred item. Something the guys hold near and dear to them. And I most certainly did. While locked up, coffee was definitely sacred to me. It was the only type of pick-me-up that I could really get because I wasn't doing drugs. It's also probably like one of the most valuable commissary items as well. So not only is it super sacred, it's definitely probably your top, it's definitely in your top three of commissary items that prisoners purchase because the aftermarket value of coffee will always be high because some prisoners are going to think that they're getting high off of the coffee. Ever tell you guys I've seen dudes snort like instant coffee in prison? Like drinking a cup of mud, a cup of motor oil, like four heaping spoonfuls in a single coffee cup wasn't even enough for them. Their tolerance level was built so high up. They crushed it up and tried to snort it. I don't know if that really did anything for them except gave them a bunch of black shit around their nose, but... I can actually see why now, back in the day, prison, uh, coffee was outlawed in prison, at Indian Creek at least. Number nine on this list, and we're moving right through this. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to keep this video under 25 minutes. I don't think that we will, though. Uh, the TV, the boob tube, the, the devil in the sky. Uh, some people refer to the TV as the devil while locked up, but others hold it sacred. So much, in fact, that they will hide the remote to the TV. That pod TV belongs to them, especially if they don't have their own TV. Once you've got your own TV, that personal 13-inch clear plastic, relatively flat screen TV, it certainly ain't all that flat. That thing is like that thick. But the TV is super sacred. It's a way for guys to be able to bid. It's a cherished item. You've got your rundown. You don't even need a TV guide. You know what shows are coming on Monday night, Tuesday night. The whole rundown, all day long. Soap operas, sports, the Miss America patch. Some guys will even go as far as to watch, what was those little dancing shows with the little girls? That'll get you beat down in prison. Oh, I'm watching it for the mamas. I'm not watching it for the, the, the youngins. I'm watching it for the mamas. A lot of guys watch that, though. That was super, that was not a good look. But the TV can cause a lot of problems, a lot of fights. You know, every item that we've mentioned on this list, super sacred and something that guys will fight. They will die behind these items, even them floors in prison. Dude will try to stab you behind them floors in prison. But the TV can cause a lot of problems. And when a dude is ready for war and he just can't take no more, I've seen dudes walk up with a cup of water and dump it right on the TV. That's when you are a Spartan for real. You have transgressed from a caterpillar to a butterfly, from your run-of-the-mill average prisoner to a freaking Spartan. Because I can guarantee you the entire housing unit, they're going to be ready to fight your ass. I've seen other dudes be mad at another prisoner and take a pair of fingernail clippers and cut the cord on another prisoner's TV. Hoping that they never get caught for that. Maybe it's because they're tired of listening to this dude scream at the Miss America patching. Finland should have won. Finland should have won. She was the best one up there. Dudes can get obnoxious behind the TV. But it is a super sacred item. Super sacred thing that you can have while locked up. It's going to help you pass your time. Bid. Not think about the outside world. Jail and prison is a hard place to be if you ain't got nothing to watch on TV or TV to watch. Let's go ahead and move on to the final thing to make this list. And, you know, when I was thinking of these things to include with this video, things that guys hold sacred, you know, there were probably a lot of other things that I could include with this, but I wanted to include some things that I could make really interesting. So coming in at number 10, it may sound a little cliche, but it's for real. Your Bible or Quran, or whatever your religious material may be while locked up. But we'll just say Bible for the sake of just calling this something. Man, dudes can become 
super religious. They can turn over a new leaf, and it's a great thing. You know, you need hope in a hopeless situation, and guys can hope for their girl to remain loyal to them. They can hope for the money to hit their books. They can hope for that person to not come to court to testify on them. They can hope that the DA got that letter that they wrote about their cellmate and the pertinent information that they have about their case so that they could potentially get a time cut. Or they can hope that through scripture, through Bible study, through religion and having a Bible, that, you know, they can overcome the demons in their life, addiction, troubles of their past, whatever it may be. Uh, religion is a huge, huge part of serving time while locked up. I went through my phases because that's, I hate the way that that sounds, but that's what it is. It's like a phase for a lot of guys. And it's not just me. So don't hate me and think that I'm the devil because I'm not the only one. But dudes can become what is oftentimes referred to as a Bible thumper. You know, I've seen guys go full-blown on the religion with the Bible, you know, hosting the Bible studies, prayer circles, whatever it may be. And then as soon as they get released, boom, it's like a light switch turned right off. They up at the Crack Shack Motel smoking doobies and ting-tings using Bible paper. And I've seen that more times than not. Now, on the flip side of the coin, I have seen dudes take the religious aspect and the religious route and come home and become preachers, uh, you know, do sermons in churches and really become part of church organizations out here in the free world. So not every prisoner is going to just be a Bible thumper while locked up, hold that Bible super sacred to them while they're locked up, go to court taking their Bible with them, which you're not allowed to do, maybe tearing out a page of the Bible, putting that scripture in their pocket to take with them to court, and then they get lit up like a football stadium, like Friday Night Lights. And you ask them about prayer circle later on that night, and they say to you, forget the prayer circle, I'm done with that. You see how much time I just got today? But the Bible most certainly can be a very sacred item to guys while locked up. Even if it is something that they just go through like a phase or whatever, it's still a very sacred item. Folks, I'm going to wrap this video up and I hope that this is something that you guys enjoyed. If there's something that I didn't include in this video that you think prisoners hold very sacred, the shank, the prison pistol, you know, comment down below and let me know what that is or what those items are. But as always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day.